The hog wild arrived at my door in a no-frills box with numerous warnings on the outside. I could only imagine what the delivery person must have thought. Despite the warnings, I opened up the box to find a well-packaged and nearly ready-to-fly model. Pre-painted canopy, bag of parts, and stenciled fins are the only loose pieces in the pre-painted ready-to-fly version. The manual has few pictures and is geared towards the unassembled kit version. I found it a little difficult to follow at times, but unfortunately the hog is very easy to assemble. At least the manual has a cheery disposition. The main body has a servos, motor, and speed controller pre-installed. Even the velcro has been installed for you. Danger Will Robinson. You are clearly warned to make sure to tighten the control rods before flight. The servos are both glued and wire tied to the Coroplast wings. They are not going anywhere. Speaking of Coroplast, aka corrugated plastic, the wing has a carbon rod stiffener and patent stripes on the bottom. The 2212-13 motor comes with a 9.6 prop and is meant for a 3S 1200-2200 mAh battery packs. I first grabbed the canopy screws from the inside of the canopy and installed them into the front hinge point. Be sure not to tighten the nuts too much. You want the canopy to swing open easily. Install the receiver, then the control push rods before moving on to the fins, which are first cleaned with some alcohol. Weigh the wing down flat, then use the included glue to bond the vertical fins to the body. A couple of carpenter's triangles keep things straight. Once dry, glue on the bottom skid rails. And lastly, the fin reinforcement screws. For the control setup, I use the radio's flying wing programming and the control throws recommended in the manual. The box doubles as a carrying case by cutting out the slots marked on the box. At the field, it was time to see just how wild this hog is. I decided to use a 3S 1600 mAh battery pack for power and good balance of runtime and weight. One last check of the controls, and I was off. With a bit of a clumsy hand launch that was more exciting than planned. <laughs> What's up? The hog handled quite nicely and only needed a small bit of trim. It didn't take me long to sneak in a loop and some rolls. Rolls are pretty quick, but loops felt a little mushy. Pulling the throttle back, I found the hog slows down surprisingly well and will almost hover in the 15 mile per hour winds we had this day. At full throttle, climb outs are very good and will easily maintain a 60 degree climb. At Jeff's suggestion, 
I decided to try a different launch technique. This time I used a discus type launch which seemed to be easier and it let me run the motor while launching. The hog also seems to like inverted flying just as much as upright. Just a touch of down keeps her from terra firma. It was at this point I realized that I was not in low rate but in high rate controls. Well that explained the goofy first launch. Low rate is actually really mild. That's full mile. The recommended low rates were very mild and would be very good for the first flight. Aileron. Back on high rates, it was time for some low level work, which I enjoyed quite a bit while exploring the flight envelope. That is, until I got slightly behind a curve. Oops. Well, it is a combat plane. I'm sure it's just a flesh wound. Other than a broken canopy, she was still flight worthy and flew like nothing had happened. Runtime with a 1600 milliamp hour battery pack is quite good and I didn't feel short change when I landed. All in all, the hog is easy to fly and pretty tough. I certainly look forward to trying her out in some full contact combat. Do a touch and go. Ha, 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 ha.